Yeah, I think regardless of who Rakan is paired with, you just go Caitlyn Morgana here, and you've secured yourself an incredibly powerful bot lane that CLG is actually really known for. I agree, but I also think getting Rakan out of the hands of Biofrost mm -hmm. is important for them. Uh, and I would not be surprised if it is Caitlyn Morgana, because yeah. that's the pick you do against Zyra yeah. Khan. It's, it's very surprising to me. I really like this for CLG, and, and if Cloud9 are, are in the mindset of even in the counter matchup, his Rakan is just so good. You can't do anything. You have to take it away. Then mm. they're they're being a, a little bit defeatist almost. You know what I mean? You're kind of putting yourself on the back foot. Uh, Sivir certainly can, with levels and some items, start to right. wave clear very effectively and, and hold on at that point. But in the early levels, I certainly expect the tempo to be very heavily in the favor of this Caitlyn Morgana, who should be pushing them in, who should be working on those turret plates. And this is going to be a new point of power in a way that I don't think we have seen for CLG yet in this series yeah. because they have not had a dominant 2v2 matchup yet. Now this one's going to be their strongest yet. I think the Varus lane was solid, but not dominant to your yeah, point. Yeah, and it so. was with Tom Kench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were pushing, but certainly not a lot was getting accomplished until the, the map got split and a turret got taken down as a trade. So this has been exciting 2-on-2 to watch. Definitely agree this is a very strong 2-on-2 for CLG. It's been a strong point for them. Karma getting added to the ban list here. And I, I do want to see if Kiana comes through as well, right? That's a champion that's been very successful every time we've seen it played so far this series, and one that should really be looked out for. Sure. I was fairly surprised to not see it banned because Niski would be the natural person to just pick it up again since you can flex the Silas around to so many different positions. But it's actually Cloud9 who bans it because they're not willing to blind pick it or give Power of Evil the chance to pick it and then counter. That's kind of the second thing this draft phase where Cloud9 is deferring to yep. CLG in the draft phase, both with the Caitlyn Morg and now with their own Kiana ban. So, even though it's still 2-1 for COG, it almost feels like the momentum of the draft has changed. It feels that way. Yeah, it, it definitely does. You know, the one thing I will say about this Kiana ban is, is I feel like they're going to save last pick here for Niski. Uh, you know, potentially could flex the Silas away. And then you are setting yourself up in a situation where perhaps they feel, hey, he, if he goes to Control Mage here, I can counter pick it. I can go for something like the Vigar that he Vigar rather that he's brought out in the past and had a lot of success with, or maybe he feels that there's some some matchup that he's forcing his opponent into that he can then dominate. In that case, I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I really tend to agree that from what we've seen revealed thus far, CLG are, are certainly getting the better end of it, and it feels like Cloud9 are the ones now kind of playing to the tune of their drum. Yeah, see how the draft winds out as Oriana is yep. locked in as a very signature pick for Power of Evil. I believe his most played all time. <laughs> Syndra second on that list. That one, of course, banned away. So now it's time it's for the be final Jarvan. champion. It's going to be Jarvan with, yeah. with Oriana, I think, almost guaranteed. Um, we could see a Sejuani, but I, but I am expecting the J4. I think they want to have more explosive engage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, good call. I mean, that's a very... Good team comp for COG's skill sets. They yeah. have POE on the control mage. They again have Ruin on the guy who can create solo kills. Instead of putting him in the mid lane, they put him more comfortably up top lane. Good late game initiation. And it's it's kind of going to be on C9 okay. to play through what will probably be a Silas mid lane. Hope that Niski can get super fed again. And then play through their solo lanes like they did in the first two games. So with the Kled locked in, this is all about playing through Kled. Kled is actually an incredibly strong matchup into the Akali. Your E actually reveals in uh, in the stealth, so you can actually, in the Shroud, if you hit him with the E, you can reveal him, you can pull him out uh, with your tether as well. Uh, the Grievous Wounds on the Q2, that right. pull, is also very, very powerful, so this can yeah. be a pretty dominant matchup. And if you snowball Kled, you can take that around the map and look for hard engages with this, um, but most of the Kled we have seen come out in the LCS was really ineffective, to be honest with you. And I, I don't think we have seen you know too many really yeah. incredible games. So I'm excited to see how practiced they are. Yeah, Licorice has played it twice, one and one on it. I also think we have to keep our minds open to Power of Evil going Orianna top. Oh, yeah. Right? Kled can be good against Wakali. How is it against Orianna? Killer. Yeah. <laughs> two, but... Probably. <laughs> he also kills Syndra, so yeah, he a lot yeah, top lane, yeah. too. Uh, there's still some stuff that COG can use to mix up, but yeah. I'm really interested to see this game four. All right, we'll see if COG can continue on the way to the reverse sweep, or if Cloud9 can close things out when they should have in game three. Every early game has gone Cloud9's way. Every mid game has gone Cloud9's way. It's been up to them to close out the games, and more often than not, they have. But CLG reinvigorated off a comeback win. They've got 
another solid scaling marksman. Their two on two looks very good. I think both Caitlyn and Sivir are very good in late game as well. C9 have much more of a team fighting composition. Lots of ways to go forward. Kled and Sivir to speed you up. Excited to see how this game does play out as we load onto the rift. Yeah, this is going to be so audience. interesting. The crowd erupting here as we are heading into what could be the final game. What I love All about right. these audiences is you do my job for me, hyping everyone up for what could be the last game of the series or the road into the reverse sweep yet again. The second stop here is game four. And before we get into the game outright, we've got Riff standing by with Irene. 30 seconds until minions... Thank you very much, gentlemen. What an amazing comeback for CounterLogic Gaming last game. Tell me, Irene, how are the players feeling coming into game four? Oh. So I think actually our bottom was a hard matchup, but actually we played well. So we go into late game and we are very good at team fight comp and they did a good plank and we just won the last team fight and we won. Awesome. And looking at this composition, it looks like you want to go aggressive again. Do you feel like you're matched up well against Cloud9 for game four? So I think this game is much easier than game three because I think our matchup, bottom matchup is much better and also we are uh, have Zalban so we can care for early game, help for others lane. So I think this game will be much easier than last game. Awesome, Irene, thank you so much for the insight. Let's get back to the action. And speaking about the early game jungle pathing, really have to pay attention to Wiggly versus Fenskare. And Meteos brought up a point on the analyst desk that Wiggly looked more hesitant than normal in game three. He ended up being level seven on release almost 14 and a half minutes into the game, but it's because a lot of his early game gambits, which had been successful in the regular season, have not been successful in this series. And you start to second guess yourself throughout a series as a jungler there, but if he can remain decisive and not Ooh. remember too many of the early ganks that didn't work and continue to be proactive, that's where I think Wiggly will find success. That ward that is killed is actually really huge how this matchup plays up. Morgana's gonna sit in the brush the entire yeah. game and now they can't track her ever. Getting the autos down, actually a really, really big deal. This bot lane is gonna be even worse than it normally is in the matchup because of that trinket dying. Yeah, certainly the case. And we have to give so much credit, you know, to Svenskeren for really being able to track and anticipate hmm. Wiggly's moves because Svenskeren has been able to do this really all year to pretty much every jungler in the league. And that is why he is a potential MVP candidate. That is why he was the only member not on Liquid in the first all team, right? You know, he has been so dominant uh, and really it has not slowed down at all in the Simpsons. What he can do right now. He's on his Krugs. Three camps that are done for the Jarvan, who's walking down to the bottom side. And it looks like Quigley has a good sense of what Sven Skaren's up to. And as he clears away the fact there are no wards, can actually poach one, maybe even two camps. Yeah, seeing the ground. Oh, 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 this is four man heading early. bot. Okay. They have the wave to try. It's full summoners, no heal. All right, it's about if the bind can land or anything else. A couple of traps come down. Sneaky's low on HP. Here comes Jarvan over the wall. He's got the slow available if he needs it. Here comes the rest of the damage. Not going to be flashed away. The flash to follow. Ignite is on. It's going to be just enough damage. First blood comes through. Niski re-engages, though. He's in rage to find that kill. And the chase on a Wiggly. He's not going to go for any more damage because the minion's being around. One for zero, though. First blood does go to CLG. Wow, so incredibly aggressive. But the kills go to Biofrost and then to Niski and the dive is possible top lane. Oh, they've got the bear trap. Got Ruben might have to flash. Unless he can get the rest of the squad coming around. He's still getting a lot of damage there. Licorice pushing him all the way away. Svenskar is going to take the camp. Uh, this is nicely done. It was a good response with the teleport there by Niski. Let's watch this one more time. See, he only level two. He does flash the knock up here very well, but the electric comes through, the ignite was there, and the double shield not enough to keep him alive. And then the oh. trap placed really well by Styx A to slow down Niski as he came in. And Wiggly was able to get enough trade damage here that with the rest of his team coming around and the minions focusing him, he wasn't sure he could finish off that kill. Yeah, so that was an attempt to break the lane wine open. Probably doesn't. Right, Sneaky able to teleport right back in lane. Both flashes burned, only assist gold going over to Sticks. They should still be an advantage uh, point in that matchup. But looking at the gold, 250 and no real experience. So love the gusto by CLG to go for that play. And I think C9 fairly accurately tried to defend it. The one thing I will point out is that the item buy was pretty poor for Sneaky. He had enough for a dagger, no mm -hmm. health potions. So, you know, I do think that is fairly significant against this really poke-heavy lane. If he eats one bad binding, one bad trade, 
you can be sent back to base. There's there's no really cushion here without those potions. Caitlyn's stacking up a coal. Got a slightly better recall there, which is actually pretty meaningful as well. Assist gold helping. And you can see the game state is slightly CLG favored. 100 of their lead. That's pretty much first blood paying for it. Do you want to point out, though, the top lane went very badly for Ruin in the meantime. Licorice yeah. was something like 20 to 10 CS as he forced the really, really rough Ruin recall. You can see it's still 36 to 21. It's definitely a top lane favor for Cloud9. Completely agree. And it's also going to be about whether or not mid lane can be favored for Nisky, but as long as he's just all in and ruin here, Ooh. landing that bear trap on a rope is so critical for this matchup to be favorable for Licorice. Yeah, Licorice actually needed to hold the second charge of his E a little bit longer. You want to delay as long as possible there, so that if he goes into the Shroud, you still can have a reveal. Mm -hmm. um, did kind of use both there, and, and now you, you all do have to be scared. You know, when you are dismounted, if you have no courage, there is the potential, you know, of just getting burst down before you yeah. can remount. Well, level six coming in in second for Licorice. The little wise to go for Ruin, but big damage is found right there. He's gonna flash in, Got he finds him. it! He gets the damage! And Ruin answers back a solo kill. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You gotta be so careful without that courage and Sneaky now gonna get dove. They found two knockups. They got a lot of damage. Sneaky's got no way out. Biofrost drops the aggro in time, and Sven Skarin can only pick up the scraps. C9 with their first successful series of plays in the early game this series. They get the solo kill top lane. They repeat dive bot. This time, the kill goes over to Stixay, and that has to infuse them with even more confidence. Yeah, that is a devastating series of plays for them. Stixay getting the kill, as you say. He's a 20 CS. They're going to be able to start pressuring these turrets heavily. And for Kled, this matchup can get really bad, actually, from behind. So this is a very risky play. If you're hanging around without high courage, you're not going to be able to reliably remount before getting burst down. He tries to flash the shuriken flip, flashed in a straight line, guts connected on and taken out. Yeah, and I love Ruin flashing for the auto and then the E. Uh, perfect timing of getting all of his passives off. And also just Licorice can't feel good about that one. And one of the things that gets really tough here now is when you are behind, if a colleague can win trades and force you into a dismount situation, you essentially are forced post six to just base immediately anytime you get dismounted. Because executes get full value as if you were full health on a mount. It doesn't actually recalculate it as you're 100% HP of your dismounted state. Yeah. So the R2 from a colleague will kill you every single time. And that is why when you fall behind as Kled in a matchup like this, it is devastating. Yeah, and C9 actually trying to force plays around mid lane. So Power Viewer went tier this game on Orianna. So a very late game build. They don't necessarily have the ability to play around bot lane, but yes. they are just going in using ults to actually steal the red buff, just trying to get, if they can get mid control, mm -hmm. then they can get bot control that way rather than going directly towards bot lane. Yeah, I mean, Sven is up 20 CS, right? So Sven yeah. has a great advantage for himself. Despite all these things going CLG's way, Hey, it's only 500 gold, right? And and we have a CS advantage for Licorice, so he can still get back in this with a play. You know, if his jungler is ahead and gets up there, Wiggly could be in trouble here, actually. He has no flag, he can't actually jump out. A level down, red buff on, stun found as oh, well. No. Wiggly is gonna drop Sven, scaring its second kill of the game and keeps the game going. If you're gonna evade like that, you can't use the flag. Oh, the Q gets dodged away, sneaking it away from that one. Close one. Flash for Flash bot lane, but really a big misstep there by Wiggly. I think when he had his red stolen away, he thought, okay, I should counter invade, get something back, stay in the game. But this is the experience of Sven Skarin coming through. It's the inexperience of Wiggly in those moments because he doesn't need to force anything. His top lane got a solo kill, his mid lane scaling, his bot lane's winning, just kind of holding the line is sufficient before he can get into late game team fights, pushes a little too hard, gives some advantage over to C9. Yeah, and you'll see in pro play almost every time when pros go for an invade on Raptors, they save their, their dash to yeah. escape, right? When you use the flag for the added damage on the Raptors, he had no way out. I think that invade, you can survive if you have flag and drag, yeah. just exit as soon as you see someone, but try to get a little bit greedy, clear it out more quickly, and heavily punished there, and that just makes bad go to worse in that jungle matchup. Sven Skarin, two levels up again. Yeah, really big stuff right there. Look at the game state. It's 200 gold lead for Cloud9, despite being down a kill in this one, and we can watch that bot lane fight yet again. Yeah, so Biofrost, sidesteps, and Black Shields. Oh. Very good reaction time by Sneaky to flash out of the Dark Binding. If that lands, it probably would have been changing the trap and may have even been a kill. Ultimate's now available on both sides here, but if Flash is Morgana, it makes that a lot harder to use. 
you can see Cloud9 once again sneaking down to the bottom side. I think potentially the more important thing is a flashless sneaky since they've tried two turret dives during that. And even though CS is down top lane, Ruin would have the ability to teleport. I wouldn't be too surprised if pre-14 minutes we saw a four or a five man dive bottom lane. And it's going to be about that long for Sneaky's Flash to come back up. So want to track that cooldown as I think going Flash for Flash is still a good outcome for CLG bot. Word of the wall, so it's going to help track some of the movements. PUE could roam for the defensive side of the lane, and it would go through that ward. Niski runs through his own wards and his sweeper on. This is a fairly safe oh. move, and now he has to play for Bottlefrost, though. Far enough back with Moby's on, he's not in danger. 20 CS lead the bot lane, 98 to 76. Big stuff right there. BF Sword, the double longsword, definitely a huge lead. Yeah. I want to point out Biofrost Comet as well for even more poke over in that lane. The jungle difference, 500 gold right now. 500 gold, but about a level and a half. And Svenskaren matching Wiggly. He's actually really on top of him. Another all in by Ruin. Dismount, looking for some auto attacks, a little more damage. There's the E half. Oh, and doesn't get anything out of the ultimate. Oh. And the dismount, the oh. rebound comes in. That's going to be enough damage, and Licorice claims it. The Hex Drinker's shield, Ruin did not keep track of it. Hadn't proc yet. That absorbed the R2, or he was dead. Barely survives, gets the remount, and that is going to swing it back to him. We said earlier in this series, Ruin's the type of top laner either get the solo kill or die trying, and this time he dies trying, takes a turret shot. The Hex Drinker comes in super clutch, as you mentioned, and now COG does not stop. They keep trying to press bot. Four a gold, Cloud9's lead right now. Sven Skarin takes his own Gromp right now. The bot lane pressure not amounted to anything exactly right now as mid lane is pushed back. The tier still stacking, power of evil, sitting on a six gold, six CS lead. I've actually got to give a lot of credit to the C9 bot lane here. Yes, they are down, but they've been dove twice. They're in a disadvantageous matchup. They've given up zero tower plates. That is yeah. actually pretty impressive. You know, I was expecting this to be even worse, but here is that pro view replay. Licorice and Ruin. Ruin sees Q's on cooldown, go in with the R1. Has him very low. It's pretty well executed, but I believe he actually canceled the shuriken oh, yeah. flip damage. So he wanted to, he thought he had the damage with his R2 there to just straight up finish him off. Didn't take into consideration the Hex Drinker. Had he actually let the Shuriken Flip connect, yeah. then R2'd, yeah, I yeah. think he gets that kill. So certainly miscalculated and misexecuted. Unfortunately, there. Good spell. Shield keeps Sneaky from getting poked out too heavily down there. And it goes for, of course, the team fighting rune and lethal tempo. Instead of the fleet footwork for healing in the lane. Oh, this is a recall and a ward. Spot Sven Scare. Locks back out as the runic echoes are already done. Center Hulk still waiting to be completed here on Wiggly's side. Has the goal to finish it, but once he recalls, that'll happen. Ruin again in the fight right there. Licorice feeling pretty comfortable. We've got now a 24 CS lead in the top side. Yeah, even though Licor Licorice actually should have been solo killed twice in there because of the physical damage. Sure, but Blood Dragon. Now look at the attempt right now. Big damage on a oh. phase of the root combos there. Sneaky's in danger, but it's a trade kill already coming across. His. That's going to be Svenskaren claiming that one. Another one as Pled comes in now as well. Stick stays on the wrong side of the spike. They're trying to get back to the squad. Flash the way, but they're still going to be in range. And double kill for Svenskaren comes through. Niski now on the front line. Going to be oh. a stopwatch. Dodges Shockwave. Going to walk backwards. Ruin finds some damage, but not enough to execute. His ult's on cooldown. So it's Cloud9 winning another fight. Ten men down to that dragon for the fight. Cloud9 not backing down here, going right at CLG. Knowing Wiggly is, is still you know, very weak at this point in the game. They're trying to attack him. They're trying uh, to get in his face. No one take the dragon, though. The fight starts with Zazel getting completely bursted out. But watch this. It looks like a little bit of CLG tunneling on Sneaky as Stixie actually gets himself trapped over the wall. And then it's all about C nine dodging lethal blows the flash for the first jerkin flip and then right here the stopwatch on the shock wave that power people was trying to lay down means c9 walk away with the advantage in that fight a ma now completed for licorice that top lane matchup is getting more and more into his favor now Several hundred gold lead to him. You can see the game state once again 800 gold c9's favor yeah i'm gonna be so curious to see where he actually builds from here uh, I do think if you want to go straight for, for the 1v1, Death Dance can be so effective because Akali really does have to whittle you down before looking for a potential all-in. And Death Dance really eliminates any possibility of that. But if you are looking for a team fighting, you know, things like the Black Weaver, the additional CDR there can be so effective and the Shred for people like Sneaky. So, interesting to see where he takes us. Not 
to Cloud9, more than half minutes in. First game we've seen where turrets have not fallen uh, before the plates drop. It's definitely been a bit more equal, all things yeah. considered, in the laning phase. Yes, you've had kills, yes, you've had explosions, but not the heavy pushing. It's been the fights more so than the lane pressure. Yeah, and no Rift Herald. There's a chance that it just goes completely unclaimed this yeah. game. Less meaningful with no plates up, so. Could be the situation here as we set the 700 gold difference. Fenskaren running back to the top side. Licorice has felt, felt pretty comfortable up there. As we mentioned, the Maw is done, and he can feel pretty good. Arm guard done for Ruin. Now has to be respectful yet again. Red buff is pretty scary. He is flashless. If they can get a reveal Circuit or a bear trap here, they cool could kill. Nice juke on the bear trap on a rope. Able to get away. They can actually go for that still. He's coming yeah. out. They're going to look for it. He has ult. All right. Dismounted, but it's not going to be enough damage. Has to burn his cooldowns. It's ult down for Ruin. Ult for Predator. Just such aggressive posturing for Ruin ends up meaning he has to burn his Akali ultimate as Fenskaren was up there. Still a very tense game here. Wiggly actually has caught up to Svenskaren in experience. So they'd be okay trying to take this 2v2 if they can get the outplay. Yeah, that is definitely very important for them. And you know, CLG now whittling away at that bottom turret, starting to get some pressure. But... Ooh. Oh, Oriana nice Shockwave. Nice. That Shockwave is good damage. That's going to be a hit to the wall, though. There's the trade. And the ultimate is across. They're fighting in other lanes as well. It's a one for one, make it a two for one. As the bot lane is also fighting back and forth. Two oh, kills on here comes side. four. And here comes more damage. Bell Shield on in time, gets away from it all. Overall, again, two for two on the map. <laughs> Have to see that bot lane fight as well, because it almost looked like Sneaky was coming to just deliver more gold to Power of Evil. He's <laughs> now really fed on this Orianna 302 after that very close two for two fight. Shockwave on top of Cataclysm, getting the double damage on both Niski and Svenskaren. I mean, CLG finally win one of those mid lane 2v2s. Yeah, exactly. And all their damage was actually being dumped into the tank Jarvan, right? Yeah. You have... And he gets first turret. Power of Evil free firing. He is going to be Ooh. so rich off this. On this recall, he's 3,300 gold. A lot of money right there. Seraphs had just combined within 20 seconds that fight starting. 40 ability power spike off that, and it definitely meant a lot right there. We can see bot lane as that turret has fallen. Match up there. All right, so Wiggly misses the EQ, which kind of gives C9 the green light to go in, but then Niski also misses his E, which keeps Wiggly alive long enough to pull off that combo. Yeah, and I mean, Niski going for that, Gragas actually didn't have his cooldowns. He just used his Q and his E right before, so there wasn't really a lot there, and this Ooh. is just a great engage over onto Biofrost, just knocks him down completely. And now we see Niski trying to poach a camp, but puts right back out as the farm goes over to Wiggly. Bot lane now under fire now as well. They should wait for the, there we go. Demolish comes through and gets some damage back to the turret, but we've now got a game where CLG is up a thousand gold because of bot lane falling. Off some of that time, they managed to knock that turret down and still the 20 CS lead for Stexay. Looking good. And it looks fairly clearly like CLG is going to try and play around oh. Jarvan Oriana combos because the majority of their gold is on the mid lane. And it's going to be another game where C9 tries to play the side lanes. The question will be, though, whether or not Licorice and Niski can win 1v1. It's because Ruin and Licorice have been going at it this whole game. Constant dismounts, very close skill matchup. That's not something you can rely on to create map pressure. And with three kills on PoE, Niski might not be able to make map pressure either. So C9 will need to look towards Gragas to create picks to get pressure. Because I don't think they're going to get the natural split push pressure they got in games one and two. Yeah, I'm going to be really interested to see you know, how CLG tries to extend their advantage too. Because sieging, sieging can be very dangerous uh, when there is Kled, Gragas, Sivir, Rakan. Like there's mm -hmm. so many ways for them to, to hard engage with all the additional move speed. Uh, they have to be very worried about any potential flank. So Siege has to be kind of preempted yeah. by a, a really good ring of vision. And that's what's going to be so exciting about the rest of this game is how many tools C9 have to engage when CLG set up those sieges. Like we're close to remounting. Every CS worth, I think, two out of 100 required. And he's close. Any PvP fight, unless he gets actually one shot by the ultimate, he'll be okay. Ma was popped a while ago, so there is not that extra shield here. He's just waiting for the for the shotgun cooldown, I think, and then you know if he walks up at all, you can get the shotgun for the guarantee right now. Got a room. Fine. That's some damage. Shockwave is going to guarantee it. A rampage. Power of evil gets his fourth kill. The power of comfort picks in yeah. incredibly important games uh, never ceases to impress me. Power of Evil's Oriana, even if it's not in meta, almost always comes in in a big way. And he doesn't even go the normal build everyone else does. He started tier, completed Seraph, so now he's actually reached 
the most powerful point with getting the Seraphs completely transformed. He's he's off to the races now. I mean, this is completely in his wheelhouse, and, and you've got to give so much credit too, even in the Keanu game. He's really starting to get the, the better of this mid lane matchup. You know, certainly the early stages went well for Niski, but the rest of that game, it was all Kiana and no Talia. Yeah, and the momentum is clearly in the side of CLG now. Power of Evil, Super Fed, Infernal Drake goes over to CLG, and this is the point where C9 needs to really buckle down. They were reverse swept in spring. They were one button press away from being in the finals here for Summer Split, trying to make the finals this year, C9 has made it to a finals every, every year. year since LCS's inception. So they need to not let this go to a fifth game. They need to not relive the past. And since CLG does now have the momentum, I want to see where C9 can go next. How can they regain their composure? Can Sven Scaren find the fix? Talk about reliving the past. Biofrost has not lost the best of five in NA history. This is a man who's won every playoff series. He's won every a playoff he's been in. Reverse sweep is how they make this happen. CLG looking good so far in game two. I think, again, I want to talk about the bottom lane briefly. I think Sivir and Caitlyn can both have very good late games. Yeah. Uh, Caitlyn, because she literally can attack literally all the time, and Sivir with the ricochet, of course, very good as well. So it's really about how the fights play out. I think it's an obvious scaling advantage. Oriana going to look really nice course as well as she stacks up nine stacks on dark seal yeah and rune is actually bottom lane here so c9 does have the numbers advantage that's why clg was playing fairly defensive good job of defense by clg they actually got the blue buff handed off to the mid laner who didn't have smite which oftentimes when the enemy is posturing an invade you usually just see the jungler smited away so i do want to actually credit wiggly here in the past 10 minutes of this game he was down two levels to sven Skarin in the elimination game in the playoffs and I feel like he's bounced back quite nicely. Yep. As he knocks this one down, level 12, actually now finally out leveling Sven Skarin and scaling well onto this mid game. Still a tight one though, 1400 gold difference as Zazel postures, sees Wiggly, let's get out of my jungle, says okay. I think a lot of the game plan here is going to become about shove and group if you're licorice, you know? Mm -hmm. You push out the wave and then you look for opportunities to collapse and alt in, you know, from, a, from an angle that perhaps CLG aren't fully expecting. Because that is really where you find a lot of your success as Kled. In straight up run at each other 5v5, Kled often you know, is not that successful unless you're really far ahead. I do think CLG have better tools to kind of absorb a, a potential engage and then turn it around if you're trying to engage through Shockwave and through this tank Jarvan and, and all of these sorts of things. Alright, well top under fire right now. Six are getting a lot done. Turret's down to one quarter. There's no defense. Good spell shield, but it only means he won't die. It doesn't mean the turret's gonna live, and that's gonna go down. Three to one in turret. CLG after the first good mid-game of the series. A winning bot matchup, an aggressive ruin, a winning power of evil. CLG looking great now, 23 minutes into the game. Yeah, and anything is possible in late game team fights, but if he's game, if this game kind of goes to chalk, COG will outscale. I think with the Orianna and the Caitlyn just going and going and getting a good combo off in late game, they're comfortable with this 2,000 gold lead not trying any big risk, which is still kind of why C9 needs to use these huge number of initiation tools. Glad Sever, Kraga, Silas, Rakan, all of them can make Blake Place happen whenever COG shows on the bottom side. So if Ruin shows on this next minion wave, how will C9 crash down towards someone trying to control vision, and how will C9 force the fight? And you can see that is actually the Titanic. So the Titanic is gonna let him push out those waves even faster and, and then threaten that class, which is kind of what he was doing here. It is warded out, but you know, anytime you can kind of get that extra man advantage, it, it's kind of like a pseudo teleport almost. You can allow yourself to close a lot of distance and, and make these roams that you know, people can't otherwise do. Uh, C9 also is a team that, whether behind or not, they rarely ever back down from looking for those engages and from yeah. taking those fights. Where CLG, most of their wins actually are not in team fights. Most of their wins are in bleeding out teams through superior objective control, mm -hmm. getting more dragons, knocking down turrets. They're actually one of the teams that had the lowest percentage of their kills in team fights. Only about 20% of their kills were in team fights in the regular season. Come around, we're seeing maybe that become inevitable. Maybe so, as C9 certainly have a very group up kind of team composition. Kled and Sivir really want to go forward and make the squad come with damage. them. Big Biofrost is going to be close to dead. The flag and drag. Hey, I'll hey, hit me instead. Pulls the aggro. Wow. Shout out Wiggly. Keep I mean, the sport alive. Shout out Sven Scarin, <laughs> nearly killing uh, Biofrost with one Q. Bio really trying 
Was he trying to ward over the wall there? Because they already had the control in the middle of the pit, but that hurts uh, as far as map pressure needs to fully recall before this Ocean Drake spawns in 25 minutes. I think there might have been a ward in the back of the pit he was trying to actually get rid of. Oh. Finds the skill shots, gets the bear trap on the rope here as well. He's gonna pull Ruin back in. Big damage coming forward, he's gotta be respectful. That's an ult backwards, so ult burned and Licorice gonna knock down some minions, he can eventually remount. Micro pressure advantages that you can get in these side lanes, Licorice winning this one, it's all about a skill match of which skill shots do you dodge, which skill shots do you land, and because he got that bear trap on a rope, definitely advantage Licorice there, coming into the next fight with an ultimate advantage if they both teleport in. 50 CS lead, actually. Looking at the two players, it's 1,700 gold. Puts Licorice ahead. TP's back into the map, and he's in a spot. Go behind the squad. Yeah, he is spotted, but it should be their their dragon, right? It's going to be yeah. difficult for CLG to fight. Going. They're pushing mid lane. Here's the play. 4v5. Akali is not around just yet. Here's the re-engage towards Hazel. Seems to get the first kill, but here comes the fight. Big damage to the back line. That's Nitsky. Sorry, Power of Evil going down as the re-engage comes in. Low health, Sneaky. Crit down. A double kill. Make it a third coming across now, and a knock up in for Wiggly. The snipe coming towards Fenskare, and Kragus is trying to waddle away, but the kills come through and CLG win that fight four to one. That could be barren unless Licorice can pull off some type of miracle. It's rare you see teams contest around a 25 minute Ocean Drake, which is why CLG actually all ends the fight in the mid lane. They cared more about the mid lane and the pressure towards Baron C9 slightly late to the fight and they get destroyed. This looks like a formality of a Baron right now as the mid outer is taken. It's a little bit of gold going towards Licorice's pockets. The engage, apparently not what C9 wanted. Counterlogic Gaming claimed the buff onto four members and just look at the gold lead. And it's, it's all about this pick, actually, on Nisky. The binding connects on Nisky in with the Shockwave combo, hitting Zazel and Nisky. So Nisky's just dumped before the fight even begins. So who cares that Kled has ultimate advantage over Akali when your mid laner is dead before anything happens and then they're just piling on a sneak? And Stixay had very good target selection during that fight. As Kled ulted in through the bottom side, Stixay flashed around the top of the fight to not only clear distance away from Licorice's Kled, but also get the last hits onto both Sneaky and Zazel. Three Adam Caitlyn. Deathcap done on Power of Evil, and almost three minutes of a Baron buff right now. CLG have so much they can accomplish with this buff. They are on Power Spike of Power Spikes right now. And CLG, well, we'll see this fight right here as Licorice wants to battle, and has a teammate now as well. Rune trying to kite away, but he's body slam, jumps back to a minion, ults backwards, the fence footwork's there, explosive cast, and the ult, there's almost nowhere to go. How does Rune get away from this one? He's not going to. Shutdown comes through. Credit for a turret in the top side. Very smart play by C9, actually, because even though they lost that top turret, that was an indefensible turret anyway, and that 41 second death time without a TP should stall at least the total break of the base. Yeah, Licorice is actually going to stay. He does get one turret back very likely here, and is going to come back to base now. So now you can threaten a potential engage here in a 5v4. Yeah. If COG sticks around, C9 would actually want to opt into a fight if Zazel can get a good initiation because Kled and Gragas are down. I think They're it's very risky of COG to be here. 5v4, no chance at Ruin joining. Can C9 make it happen? Zibberolt pop. Here comes a bit of a slow. Six, they got to kite backwards. Body slam lands. They're going to find the knockup. 80 carry down. Running away is Wiggly. Re engage comes across. Two kills come through to Nisky. What a flank from Nisky there. Cloud9 dismantling this Baron buff. Your negative power play now for CLG, and it will be the dragon that goes to Cloud9. C9 faced adversity and does exactly what they needed to do. They say, OK. What's COG gonna do with the Baron buff? They're gonna try and split. Let's catch the split pusher before it can happen. And what should happen oh, after ruin. that, as Licorice just continues to pile on to Ruin. Woo, big damage. Ruin's gonna feel pretty comfortable. That's another bear trap coming across. Bait? Stop box burn, the hockup is there. Not a lot of damage to the Wiggly. Dunk comes in, now dismounted. Here goes PoE now as well. Flashless, that should be a kill, but he's gonna remount, and he's just so healthy. Oh. Push them back. So there goes the entire Baron power play. To get back to the previous fight that we saw in mid lane, that's actually, this is a fight that should never happen. When it is a 4v5 and you're giving time for C9 to reset, you should not let them flank you like this, but C9 does exactly what they need to do. Beautiful engage from Dazel and flank from Niski. And so much credit to that deep ward. CLG did not have their flank covered. This ward was really what allowed Cloud9 to go for it. And then Licorice, you know, drawing all this pressure down on the bottom side. Now as a full Black Cleaver completed, he's getting scarily ahead of Ruin. Yeah. And, you know, drawing that teleport and still surviving, he can actually kill Wiggly. 
he wants to. Doesn't have vision to go for it, so it, it, is, it would be very risky. You don't know who else is there, but you can actually pull him out of the flag and drag with your Q, okay. and maybe he goes for it now. Well, he's face checking. Could be a now face. he's got some damage. Jumps away. Cool. And the ward comes down, but it's a bit of darkness. Licorice, though, with the backup, feels safe to kill the control ward. Yeah, it doesn't want to fully commit to it with the ultimate to actually follow the flag and drag, but still a good little bit of pressure. And you know, with Svenskeren now shadowing him, he can push pretty aggressively. They're starting to open up avenues you know, for these kind of little skirmish fights on the map, because you know you were talking about Jat, the strength of CLG's five v five and kind of their scaling advantage yeah. there. So C9 are trying to find ways to circumvent that strength. And I think because Licorice has that gold advantage, he is the way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about waiting in fog of war and winning the one v ones. And the more he can do that, the less CLG will be able to move mid with four or five players. Because especially at this stage, his turret killing is quite fast as well. So C9, I think, have recovered from the misplay they had in the mid lane and the Baron being given up. And we're kind of back into a very close to even state in this matchup. Licorice is 2,000 gold lead himself. On the CLG side, PoE and Stixay up 2,000 over their individual opponents. Overall gold lead slightly in CLG's way. Yeah, certainly CLG is still looking good, but Stixay now, you know, he's not so far ahead. It's three items apiece for, for the Marksman. That's yeah. very big. Once Niski actually completes his death cap, yeah, you're still a bit behind, but you are extremely relevant, right? You are, you are there, and it's coming down more to execution now than just raw power that CLG kind of had the advantage of earlier on. Stop watching for Stixay, 1,900 gold in inventory. He's going to need to reset before Baron spawns. But look at how far behind CLG is on that bottom wave. Licorice all the way to the turret already, getting half of the damage down, and Ruin actually can't step up to him. So even though CLG has vision control over the Baron right now, I don't know how long they're going to be able to maintain that because the instant CLG shows a second person bottom to try and contest Licorice, that's going to give C9 a window to go and get that Baron Vision back. C9 are actually trying to lay a trap at this red buff. We'll see if uh, anyone does check into it. They know he's there now because Wiggly did just spot him, so just going to be the red buff steal for, for Sneaky and, and straight back out. Krug stolen as well, so several hundred goals. gold goes back C9's way. They're feeling comfortable through the bottom side, right? Again, using Licorice as the lever. Music game is the way they're getting through into this one. Level 17 now for Power People in the mid lane, 16 for Niski. TP comes back in to make the play in the mid. Stick says TP, not that valuable otherwise, of course. Yeah, C9 has been able to play around the bottom side because Baron hasn't been up. Baron is now up in 15 more seconds, so I think C9 is back into a point where they're pressured to try and get vision control. If they get caught during this little window, it could also mean the game, or they could actually flank behind CLG and go for a fight. Black comes down, Ward spots them though, and it's gonna be red buff. Looks like going pretty cleanly over to Sneaky. Something critical to note though, there's no C9 wards in this whole X area, yeah. right? So they have no potential flank wards. They have no real way to get in behind them unless Licorice wants to hard commit to a Clyde ultimate. And you can see Sven Skarin hanging around on the side. Oh my God, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, now would kind of be the time for C9 to go in because this is where Ruin is trying to push the bottom lane back out. Licker should actually made the roam back up so they could posture in that window. And yeah, Sven Skarin is pretty fed. He's gone Zonia's into the Morellanomicon. So uh, also having the potential to kind of one combo someone on CLG. Sven Skarin almost as much gold as Ruin. 10K versus 11, it's not that far off. I mean, CLG now, it's, it's their turn to be strong, right? You know, yeah. Kled is down on the bottom side. They're trying to at least force out Licorice's teleport. We'll see if, if they're going to actually kind of call their bluff. Licorice is yeah. running up. He wants to get in range. This is level three Kled ultimate, so the range is very big. They can stay on the Baron for a fairly long time because of Orianna shields, but Wiggly is still getting poked down. It's getting closer and closer. It's going to at least force the cutout. I think we're going to see a fight. Swords down the wall. Ult comes across. Look at the charm of the knock up is there. They push one back in, but they haven't got six again. Now they have. And that's Garden Angel down. One kill picked up, though. It's oh. Folly just drops, but it is a trade kill. Six a back alive. Jumps away, stays up. That's going to be an easy trap. That's going to be a kill. That's going to be a shockwave now as well. And it is got on to Licorice. Looking now for the re-engage. Four versus two. Snipe brings one low, and CLG can continue to push forward. They have Smite if they need it. Oh, Licorice failed the shotgun. They also get over the wall. It but he's, got the shields. he's gonna have the slow. They're gonna have the damage output. He will not remount. And CLG can go right back for the Baron. Cloud9 tried to engage in, but there was this trap line. And CQ was forced to blow his spell shield to get through the trap line, run straight into the Akali with no spell shield available. And he is just gonna get roasted. So Cloud9, yes, they had a good flank, but their carries couldn't get in. 
Wiggly smote early to heal. He doesn't have it right now if Niski wanted to try a miracle. He might die. He will that a Baron, but at oh, least they get this in time. Niski can only walk over and Woo! see that it happened. But there is always a chance. It's a tense one, guys, in this game. But watching this fight back one more time, COG didn't have an intent to finish Baron, so they forced the fight. And really watch Power of Evil, I think, flashing away from the Niski steal as Sneaky does get ticked down by, I believe, the Ignite, finally, from Biofrost. And everyone's buying time, and Shockwave comes in in the end. Since Stixay had the GA, and Power of Evil was able to flash out of the initial engage, that gave him the later edge in the fight. It just felt like such an overcommitment onto Stixay. You know, he has a yeah. GA, and Sneaky is blowing his spell shield to run over a trap through the Akali to yeah. auto-attack the GA Caitlyn. And yes, they did get that initial kill, and that was clearly the call, it was hard commit on Stixe, but you know, your Sivir then has really nowhere to go. Yeah, and I think in moments like that, Baron, 6,000 health. When you see it again, 3,000 health. Go, 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 go! Yep. Right? It's hard to plan the right initiation, which is why sometimes when you have a shielding team like an Orianna, it can be very beneficial to force a team to engage on you at Baron. Counter engage worked. Counter launch gaming went four to one in that fight. One and a half, you want to count Wiggly dying, <laughs> but they got the Baron buff. And look at this, they're walking around with sweepers all the way down mid lane, trying to check for any potential TP wards. Uh, there are a couple uh, that could potentially be used here by Cloud9, and that is the way they kind of got themselves out of this last yeah. Baron buff. You know, this ward and those two, those are really the ones that they might be looking for. And I get nervous every time I see Bruin 1v1 with Fled. I, I, CLG's got to stick together. That's how the last play fell apart. Look how much pressure Liquid is actually applying in the mid lane. As long as CLG can keep even numbers with their main team, they are probably okay. So I, I, I want to see CLG just stick as five people. I don't even know if it's worth it to keep Licorice in the side. The tough part is, they, I don't know if they feel that they can actually get through the Silver Wave Clear, right? right? And I think that is what they're concerned about. Gragas actually offering a, a non-trivial amount here with all his AP as they well. They might die. But they are, they are threatening. Niski's behind them, though. Here comes the Clan Elf. They're going to flank from two sides. Here comes the attempt. They find the stun in the ruin. He's going to try to kite back for stays alive. But here comes the attempt for Sticks. They stun the first time. Fighting away. Oh! To stay alive. It's three for one so far. And Counter Logic Gaming have to book it. What an aggressive call there by C9. You're kind of expecting the CLG dive to come through. But C9 actually catches them halfway through a dive. At the start of that fight, Wiggly ulted Sneaky in the turret and then tried to flash leave him, but the rest of C9 was able to fly through for the kill. And Niski on this Silas, such a playmaker, stealing the Akali ult, coming in from behind, and he said she gets the 1v3 kill onto Stixe, who didn't have his flasher GA because of that last fight. So C9, not one to sit back and go quietly in the night. They are looking for hard engages. Anytime CLG sieges, they're going to get engaged on, and that is what they're showing them, which is making it so much harder than you would normally expect for a Caitlyn team with Baron to close out a game. And that's one of the reasons we are so excited about these drafts, the tools that C9 has to engage, and the willingness to go for it. So lock your eyes on Niski in this team fight. Has the Akali ult, uses the E, dashes in. Really, everyone is trying to peel. It doesn't matter. It's a GA Caitlyn whose GA is down. No magic resist against the M uh, magic damage Silas. Beautiful flank by Niski. Felt like a missed opportunity for Power of Evil. 950 ability power Orianna, never shockwave. When you've got a Silas sitting on top of Caitlyn, ER is guaranteed peel, flash it or die, and that never came through. I feel like they had the tools to maybe keep his teammate alive. I think that's a really good point. You know, my, my only guess is that he was thinking, hey, we're, he's not gonna die, we're gonna kill him anyway, then I have this for the team fight and we end the game. You know, you're looking for the bigger prize, but sometimes you just need to pull the trigger, as you're saying, and to defend your teammate there. Well, it's going to be the game turning around now. Cloud9, yeah. we're on the receiving end of an unlosable game that they lost. And this time around, though, starting to make the comeback happen against Baron C, just finding the kills. And worth pointing out, Sneaky now 100% crit here on the Sivir. That is a very strong marksman. They're threatening this flank here. Two solos here on go. the side. They're going to look for Wiggly going forward. going to make him jump away. Biofrost could be isolated, but he's not found out either. They're going to stay safe on that one. Quality engage at this point could be the game for either team, even if Baron buff isn't up. GA is now back for Stixie, which could play a pivotal role in some of these longer, more extended team fights. I mean, it's crazy. All 10 flashes available. You know, yeah. teleports for both solo laners available. Everything is here, and it's going to come down to, as you say, execution in a final fight, because they have all the tools they need to pull it off, and it's 
really down to who can make it work. And just thinking about the way CLG got here, remember the game where they had given up four Barons against Optic and came back? They have two Barons themselves in this game, only up 2,000 gold. The Elder Drake, though, is where the attention needs to be placed. Licorice has control of the bot lane, which makes it so difficult for CLG to actually move up because they'll be at constant risk of a Kled play. It's really this line of scrimmage right here that is all Cloud9 past that line. They're not able to really get any vision in that yeah. quadrant of the map thus far. And Cloud9 are, are not looking to make a play before that Elder unless it really presents itself. They're trying to kind of choke them out. Yeah, and it would be a three Drake Elder. That's no joking around. It would be a huge amount of damage that C9 could then take into the Baron. And they have a Mountain Drake to kill it faster. Question is, 20 seconds desync, that spawning from Baron spawning. If those 20 seconds are given, you can trade objectives. That's probably fairly close trade. It's debatable at least. As C9 now, Heading away, but it's taking some damage, but he's got to be careful. He's fine, though. Bear Trap comes down. Ruin's coming around. They have double ocean, so the poke means less onto Niski. They are going to start regening up. They get the scuttle, which is going to be additional move speed for potential engage. But crucially, Kled is not threatening, so it's five people right in front of CLG. I think CLG would be happy with front-to-back team fights. It's the flanks that hurt them. They might actually look to push mid and get mid priority as C9 starts to strike. I think we're going to get a fight. Look at Niski, though. Niski's wrapping around behind. I'm not There's sure he's being spotted here. Ruin's yeah. flanking as well, but he's much further away. Well, they're buying the time, though. Here they go. go. That's going to be Oriana Shock if he can get into the front. Or Licorice goes in. Here's the other the top. They find the charm. Comes in. Shockwave pulls in two. Trades back, but only a single kill. It's two for one, and Cloud9 going to claim the third here as well. A three to one team fight. The Flash re engage. They've caught Power of Evil. It's a he sticks safe. Trying to do it by himself. Kiting as best he can. Oh. Does he have the damage? He's got the roots. Can't quite fit the quadra that we saw in the finals years ago, but does stay alive. If 6-8 dies there, the series is over, but he may have just bought CLG a few more minutes because instead of pushing mid, they're taking the Baron. Yeah, and on his iconic champion there, oh. kiting it out. He had to get that kill on Sneaky, or yeah. this was a done deal. He gets it, he survives, he even keeps his GA, so that is massive. But again, it's about these flanks. This key is finding good positioning, and they're having really well-coordinated engages yeah. to get to the CLG backline. Yeah, I love the way C9 is playing, because everyone pays attention to Kled as he flies in, and it buys time for Niski to sneak. They have to deal with Kled. They have to deal with Zazel. And then Niski, with the Oriano, has to get point blank range to use it does and pulls off the huge kills on the backside. And in that backline, Sven Skirin actually pre-body slammed the anticipated ult flash from Akali. He actually rejected Akali out of the air there with a pre-body slam on top of Sneaky. That was brilliant play. And then these dying moments of the fight, Sneaky goes down and Stixa is able to kite it out and stay alive. Really, really big, but this is double Massive buffs here for C9. Yeah, and 50 seconds left on Elder while there's two minutes, 40 seconds on Baron. That would be the time to dive. However, C9 has been winning with flanks. They don't necessarily have amazing turret dive. This would be the window. The next 30 seconds, though, if they want to try a big one to end the series. And no one's down towards Licorice just yet. They are going to send Ruin down there, but this is a six-item fight now. You know, there's still yeah. two more items to complete for Ruin. He is way behind. Double Baron Cannon working well here in that mid lane. So C9 may be able to try to pull them apart a bit. And multiple members are going to come down here and, and have to answer Licorice. The last item is now done for 6A. Bloodthirster comes in. Elder Dragon going to fall off before the Siege can do anything else. So Red Steel is something. 43 minutes in, the gold pretty much irrelevant, but Cloud9 are ahead in that regard. It's down to the two minutes left of Baron Power Flight. Mid lane, the target of the attack right now as they have the cannon minions still pushing forward. You can also see in top lane on the minimap, a small wave is, is going to be starting to stack here for C9. So, you know, over the course of this next 145, we'll see if it actually does get down and they can have an additional lane of pressure. COG has been very good at finding picks from within their base, using the sweeper inside their base to make sure no one is spotted, having the Caitlyn traps in the mid lane. Look for Wiggly to try and get a pick on a priority target with an Oriana Shockwave. I think that would be the way CLG would try and get back at this one, because C9 is going to keep playing the split push game with Licorice and taking pot shots at the turret every time a cannon wave approaches. And these traps are being so big there for Stixa. You can see Sneaky steps forward, he uses a spell shield to knock one out, but the cooldown on the trap is much lower than on yeah. the spell shield, so you can just continuously replace those. 
and Sivir does not actually have enough auto attack range to, to be beyond that and poke away at the turret. So, you know, C9 really have no siege potential here. It's essentially four melee champions and one short range AD. They do need team fights, to your point, to be able to close this out. Yeah. But look at Licorice on the bottom side. No one's answering him. He's going to knock down this turret. Okay, turret siege continues. 50 seconds still on the Baron, but Cloud9 had so much time to work with, and they are making the headway forward. And it's because COG has no answer to Licorice, which is why they're desperately hoping to get a pick in transit. But C9 taking the long way around, the safe way around, buying time for Licorice to get his job done. That's that top lane wave now. Has stacked up quite a bit. They are going to be able to potentially usher this forward, but you can see Sneaky is going back to base. So uh, yeah. I do think you know, they may try to go for this outer tier two, but that will likely be the end of the Baron power play. Sneaky now on six items here as well as they look for Licorice. The attempt, Licorice. No flash. He could defensively ult. Like, if, you, if you have yeah. to be uh, very nervous, you could go for that. But there's no flash on, on either of the engagers there too. Okay, there's top lane tier two down. Three and a half thousand gold in Baron buff times out. 3,800 gold Baron power play. That's the lead, that's encapsulated. By the end of that team fight, around that Elder Dragon, the objectives they gain, and they go back to a reset game. Six to seven in turrets. The C9 Drakes don't matter in combat, only against Poke, so the actual team fight themselves, not very different. And we've got a Dragon, you know, neither of these ADs have a GA now. You know, 6A got rid of yeah. his, he replaced that. So they're going for kind of more maximum damage type of type of builds here. Yeah. So so one error or one proper engage could mean you're, you're just done. Neither of them have GAs, and only one of them has boots. <laughs> Sneaky has decided to go for six fully aggressive uh, items, which will lower his mobility yeah. if he does get Jarvan ulted into a shockwave. So the team fights are going to be so much about who can initiate first as the game gets later and later and later. I think the main beneficiaries of a later game would actually be Ruins Akali. He's still really far behind. Kled's been at six items for what feels like about 10 minutes, yeah. and Ruin just now completing his fifth. But it's really about Elder Dragon number two. C9, if they get this, it lasts for five minutes. It's more powerful. They already have the inhibitor down. They could probably end it. And because they still have the Kled, they're getting the split push. So COG in dire straits yet again. Yeah, I mean, that bottom lane is going to push for Cloud9. So if there's this dance back and forth, there's no power to actually protect that inhibitor. It eventually can be threatened. And this Elder is about to spawn. So Cloud9 playing for mid lane control. They're going to have top and bot potentially you know, pushing here for them. We'll see if they are going to just start this up or, are they, or if they're going to look for an engage. Cloudman up in levels in jungle and support. I think it behooves C9 to just start and dare COG to engage. As long as they're spread out enough Niski. to not get comboed. And Niski can always threaten that flank. COG yeah. doesn't have vision. But C9, they can burst it down. If they get it, they probably win. Wiggly runs forward, level 17 to 18. 50 damage difference in this fight usually doesn't matter, but something to watch for is the whole squad is grouped up. Niski still over the wall. 4K health. In they go for Niski. A lot of damage. Good smite with the Elder buff. There's the knockup. One kill picked up for Cloud9. And they can 5v4. They can keep pushing forward. The flash in, a flash away, but he's still on top. PoE goes down, making a third and a fourth. Cloud Nine has done it. The road to the finals is paved with the corpses of Counter Logic Gaming. I love what C9 did in that fight. They fought as they got the Elder to knowing the power of the buff was being seen so great. No reverse sweep today. C9 will make their way to the final. Three to one, into the next as they go. Cloud9 are your first finalists of 2019 summer. The chance of being the number one seed in the world. They take down CLG. They put their stamp on it, the clean ace to close it out around the Elder Dragon. What a way to do it. Woo. CLG certainly making